Hey, it's the BNPR show, a celebration of stylus rendering. On today's show, can you better NPR? Inokuni 2, you can learn a lot from it. Real time edge rendering is in Blender. Tutorial and tricks Ian Packeton made a simple and fast grain shader to add a very interesting stylized effect. The idea is to add very small veranoid texture to the color input of the diffuse PSDF. Other types of texture like cloud can also be used here. Then using a color ramp, he colors the grayscale shaded model. The result is very interesting looking NPR. It is a short video, go watch it. Next trick. 100 drips matte this screen tone and hatching material. The hatching and screen tone are matte from the same setup. For hatching, from the texture coordinate, you take camera or window view, separate it and only take the Y component and pipe it into a band texture. Then the output is blended together using linear light band mode. Later, combine with the shaded info from the principal BSDF. Hatching has one part of this node setup while screen tone has two. Screen tone mixes two of the hatching node setup but in different directions before it is blended with the principal PSDF. Next, the result is linked to a color ram for coloring and shading control. These are simple setup and very effective. How about trying them after this? Moving on, Yuki Mituki made this interesting looking GIF. It is a parallax box. It behaves as if they are depth. A very popular example for this is on the buildings in the Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Using parallax, they do not have to model the interior of the building but get some details inside the building. This is how it is done. Here is a cube. It is already UV unwrapped. The magic is to shift the UV map based on our viewing angle, which is done by this parallax knot group. We have two major inputs, the UV coordinate and the geometry normal. We use normal to offset the UV coordinate. First, we separate the geometry normal vector. Here, we can multiply the strength of the shift. Then, we can combine them and add the modified normal vector to the UV vector. The result is a UV vector that will change based on your viewing angle. Easy, isn't it? This can be done in any version of Blender. You can layer many UVs and texture with different shifting strengths to create depth and details. Next trick. CG Virus made a vertex normal editing introduction video. Here he introduces the tools and in which context they are used. As vertex normal editing is a work in progress, working with it right now is not intuitive. You have to go to object data, then normal, to toggle auto smooth to on just to see any effect using the tools. Rotating vertex normal also not intuitive. You have to press R for rotate, then press N to change editing to rotating normal. Currently, N is not displayed as a tooltip in the info panel. This feature is frankly quite hidden. What we hope to see is turning vertex normal editing into its own editing mode, freeing up many hotkeys. Also, make a cool gizmo to make editing super intuitive. Anyway, go watch this video, it is very informative. NPR Games The second Nino Kuni game, Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom has better NPR characters compared to the first game, but a downgrade of the NPRness in the environment. If you have the chance to get this game on PC, there are few things you can learn from it. From the 103 characters that you can unlock in the game, you can learn one character design, all sort of hairstyles and body proportion, and some with tails. Two, learn how to edit vertex normal to get good shading transition. Three, the color use. This game is a treasure trove of good colors. Four, the shadow at full quality is not perfectly recast. It is even better when the shadow is set to low quality. It abstracts the shape casting the shadow. Go get Nino Kuni 2 and ogle at the characters. Animation Spider Man Into the Spider Verse has a style mixing normal 3D shading with 2D comic elements. It is something different and really stands out. Here is how it is done character animation mostly in 2s, background in 1s. Most MPR effects 
are screen space effects. Screen space means the effects are added to be seen flat on the viewing surface and not mapped on the mesh. Rim light effect using screen tone dots on highlight. Line hatching on shadow. Selective chromatic aberration. Surface line on character faces and speed line akin to what we can do with wrist pencil. Warm key and cool feel lights everywhere. Parallax on reflective flat surfaces such as building. Many of the tricks in the movie has been shown. Now you can make your own Spider-Verse. Moving back to Blender creation, Chaos Monger Studio made a thriller for the animation robot will protect you. It is very atmospheric, go watch it. Dylan Gu in collaboration with Blizzard made Katsu Watch Bested Rises. If you have not watched it, please do it after this video. News There is a controversial development with Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Sony is trying to pattern NPR, specifically 1. Rendering and compositing technology for screen tones. We have seen how this is done earlier and it is very simple. 2. Drawing edges on the surface of the geometry like grease pencil, then convert the lines to mesh for rigging. 3. Machine learning component to predict where to put rendering lines in the next frame. 4. Shading tools that create the illusion of depth on a flat surface for the emulation of interior volume of buildings with illustrated graphic reflection. Isn't that just parallax? I think we know how to do that. Most of these are not new and have been done in many games, animation and illustration. Plus the techniques are public domain. What do you think? Should or could Sony pattern these NPR techniques? Let's hear it in the comment section. 100 drips on Twitter made a lovely dithering material. The knot tree is crazy. Here's a cool trick. Dithering can also be used as transparency factor. Blender developers, please turn this knot tree into a shader. LANPR, the real-time edge renderer with stable intersection edge view, is available for testing. Twitter user MonoRender made this cool render to test it. Siwei Liu also made a video showcasing what LANPR can do now. Everyone, go download this latest build. Link in the show notes.
are two artworks this month worth of a little discussion. Tisha Han on Sketchfab is famous for his shirtless 3D creation. This time he made a mesh box with a tiger head on it. He uses a lot of inverted hull method for the outline. He even layered few inverted hull to encapsulate the tiger head. Simple yet exciting. If you look at this render from afar, you will not see anything special from it. Only when up close, we can see the details. The shading is a work by just a sec on Discord, based on a model by GH Purple on Sketchfab. This feels like looking at skilled screen printing. It uses the same screen tone shader presented earlier in this video. The show is almost over, but you can go to these places for more NPR. This show is made possible by our lovely patrons. They get early access to this video. The hardcore tier gets blend file related to this show. This is our first show. Feedback is welcome. You can contact us with artwork, tricks and tutorial and news items. It can be your own stuff or made by others. Use the show's contact form. All links in the show notes. Before we depart, one last question. What do you love about NPR? <laughs>